Right, welcome back to Coachcast. Um, I'm lost track of episodes. Name? No. Is it not? No. It's guest, guest number eight, podcast number ten, I think, or nine, something like that. Anyway, we are joined by the one and only, again, another IFBB pro, another IFBB figure pro, Erin Thompson. Welcome to the podcast. All the way from Scotland uh, today. She came on a sleeper train. <laughs> so fucking weird. Um, we'll talk. We'll do sponsors first. Um, pro athlete, give them a follow. Sign up if you're a coach. If you're a client of anyone, go and give your coach a rating on Pro Athlete, which is like a trip advisor for coaches, is what I like to call it. And also the Muscle Medic UK um, for any of your uh, physio needs. He travels all around the country, um, pretty much Midlands to fucking Yorkshire so if you're in need you got any aching body parts hit the man up you use Christian 10 for discount so we're gonna get straight into this one because we're actually doing back-to-back podcast today because Erin herself has her own podcast which is called take up space um and you're gonna want to listen to that one because it's a <laughs> dirty podcast it's juicy <laughs> yeah it's a juicy podcast <laughs> so um you want to listen to that one after this but I don't think that, that's not gonna be out for a while is it Mine. No, because I'm launching. I'm launching the podcast this week, so it'll probably be like maybe like four weeks. I'm going to push <sighs> yours in. That's I'm going to push it in a little bit closer because he's one, going to be the first guest, but also the first male as well. Yeah. So and last, you could imagine the first questions. <laughs> Come on, don't get any of them out. <laughs> no one's no one's competing with this. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna go straight into it. You know, everyone knows how like, these are kind of like laid out. Um, we're going to mainly talk coaching, business, mindset, all that sort of stuff, and a few extra bits and bobs with Aaron, and then some IG questions as well. Um, so, firstly, introduce yourself, where you started, where you're from, how you got into bodybuilding, what you were doing before bodybuilding, jobs, work, everything. Ooh. Start from the start. <laughs> everything. Yeah, everything. Start from the start. Okay. So, born in Scotland. Born in Scotland. Before bodybuilding, I actually did mechanical engineering. Fuck off. <laughs> did. did you? Yeah, I was a mechanical engineer. So I didn't know that. my dad's got an engineering company. So I worked for for him, but I was a, I that was when I figured out that I could not be employable. I would just do whatever I wanted. Right. And when it came to actually like doing the jobs. It was like a race for me, so I was like trying to like drill everything as yeah. quick as I could. So what, so what did a typical day look like as a mechanic? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see that at all. I had a boiler suit and everything. Oh, fuck yeah, no. Boiler suit. Talking boots. of fetishes. <laughs> <laughs> boiler suit boots, a massive hard hat. I look quite sexy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Show us later. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so started that, but then realised that I absolutely hated that. So How long went, did you do that? I did that up until I was 18, and then I went away. From when? Oh, maybe like, I left school early, so like 15, I think. Right, okay. So like qualifications-wise from like school, did you hate school? Did you like school? I was a little shit in school. It doesn't fucking surprise I was a bad girl in school. I just wasn't interested. I was hanging around with the wrong group of people. So I, at the time, I was one of those people that used to go out and party every single weekend. I would go out on a Thursday and not come home until a Sunday. I was one of those, right, okay. one of those people. Okay. And then my friends at the time had booked a holiday at Magaluf. My mum was like... What year? Magaluf? Because I was in Magaluf <laughs> when I was young. <laughs> my mum my was like, why don't you go and... Work on a work in a summer camp in America, so I actually went and did that rather than go on my girl's holiday that I was supposed to be going on. Right, okay. and that so I went over to Virginia and worked in an all girls summer camp for for three months when I was eighteen, <laughs> and I teach them how to play golf, I teach them how to swim, and mm-hmm. that's when like I actually realised that I was like a people person. So right. when I came home from that trip, I was like, right. I go to the gym. I love going to the gym. That I'm going to get my PT course. So I went away. So you're still about 18, 19 at this point? Yeah. Yeah. I think that was, I think I was fully qualified for personal training in 2015. Okay. How old are you now? 27. 27. Okay. Just. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. So, yeah. How long has that been? Like six years, maybe? 
2015, that would be eight years. Yeah, it, it, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so he qualified as a PT eight years ago. Yeah. And so to be fair, this is kind of like before online coaching really was a thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Did you go and work at like a local gym or... Yeah, so I worked in a DW Sports. Yeah. And when I first started, I really struggled to get clients. I had like two clients in my first month of mm-hmm. personal training because I think because of the way that I was at the time, I was such an anxious person, I wasn't confident, I couldn't go up to one person in the gym and even go up and say hello. Like, I was terrified. So, like, you had to do gym floor time and yeah. I used to just hide in the hide in the toilet the majority of the time because I did not feel that sounds comfortable like, that sounds like me and any to job do I've that. Had. Yeah. Just <laughs> paid paid to shit basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz I just didn't want to be out there cuz like I think you're probably quite similar to this cuz I was going to say then I know what you're like now and you're like the hive of activity. Do you know what I mean? Like very confident. We at least yeah. come across confident. Yeah. Um at a show, always running around, hugging everyone, speaking to everyone. Me and you, when we see each other, we go mental. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, <laughs> and it's like, what's been going on? Yeah. Um, I When I was in environments that I wasn't comfortable in, I'm the opposite. Whereas like, if I'm in the gym, I'll run up to everyone. I'm best mates with everyone. Yeah. Love it. Expos, shows, all that sort of stuff. But if I'm in an environment that I'm not comfortable, I just won't like even like look at anyone. Yeah. I'm the I'm the exact same. Like, yeah. but I confidence has came with time. Like, it's like confidence is a skill. It's mm-hmm. something that you don't. You're not born confident. You're not born a confident person. But if you actively try and do things that is going to push you out of your comfort zone, you naturally beco- become more confident. So yeah. it's just something that's like came with time. But when it comes to like other social occasions it's not that i'm not confident it's just that i, I don't give a shit i just yeah. don't want to be there do you know what i mean yeah. like i'm not i won't, I won't I'm, not drop in, you in... I'm not interested like my time is so precious now yes and i'm like i want to make sure that everything that i'm doing in my life is what i actually want to do yes so going to like different events i'm just like i can't be yeah. bothered speaking to yeah. you yeah I I I'm I just seeing it how, it how it is. I won't drop you in the shit because I'm on your close friend story, but you were somewhere the other day. I'm like, I can't be asked for this shit. <laughs> and I'm, I'm literally the same. Like, I think because time is so limited with what we do, when I'm doing something, I want it to be something that I want to fucking do. And that might sound selfish, stuff like that, but I'm only here for me. I'm here once, and I want to do what I want to fucking do. Yeah. And that normally don't involve speaking to people that I don't want to speak to. Yeah, especially on prep as well. Yes, just, <laughs> just as an FYI, Erin is currently about eight weeks out yeah. from first show this year. How many shows are you doing this year? Planning to? Just two. Two? Two, I think. Okay. I'm going to do Spain and then I'm going to do Portugal. Sick. So quite local. Yes. Not Thank too much goodness. travel, which is... Yeah, I know. It's going to be nice. Good. It's yeah. just more for the time difference as well. Because of coaching clients and having so many other clients in prep, like when I did it a couple of years ago... I had to set an alarm at two o'clock in the morning to get up to do check-ins from two till five yeah. to then go back to sleep yeah. because at the time difference, I needed to be up to make sure that my girls were still getting their check-ins yeah. at seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's fuck, yeah. difficult. Like I've been thinking about, oh, I might go to, I might go and like live in Bali for a month or so. I can't. Yeah. I think it's because of, I don't want the time difference. To at all, it just doesn't work. But anyway, we'll, we'll digress. Um, so, pretty low confidence, only a couple of clients in the first month. Do you feel like there was like any major change that had happened to bring you out of that? And do you feel like as like your body's grown, your confidence has grown a bit? Because mm. obviously from seven years ago, you've grown a lot. Yeah. So I worked in a DW Sports and then I moved back to my hometown and then people kind of knew me. What's your hometown? It's called Fraserburgh, so it's like really oh, yeah. north of... <laughs> Do you know it? Oh, yeah. Go there all the time. <laughs> all the time. No, I've never heard of it. <laughs> so it's just like a really small, small town. Mm-hmm. So nobody did bodybuilding there. There was only like two gyms that were like half decent. So I started PT in there, and then I got really busy with, with PT. And do you think that was mainly just word of mouth and who, who you knew? Word, word, word of mouth and just putting myself... And did that then bring your confidence up? 
bring, bring my confidence confidence up, yeah. But I think the thing that actually brought me confidence was, say, like, do going into my first contest prep. So because of the, how small the town was, nobody was exposed to bodybuilding. Yeah. Nobody knew what bodybuilding was. So everybody in my time was speaking about, about me. It. Everybody. And you got to think as well, back then, female bodybuilding is not as prominent as it is now. Now, yeah. everyone's fucking, all, all females are fucking going to the gym. Yeah. Oh, I love that. It's yeah. great. Because you should feel fucking empowered and shit. And I can go to the fucking gym and it doesn't fucking matter. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, okay, so when was what year was your first prep then? I've definitely seen pictures of this. Yeah, th- <laughs> 2017. Okay, April so two 2000. years after you were a PT. Yes. You did your first prep. Yeah. Bikini? Yeah, I was a little yeah. a little bikini girl for and my first two shows. Did you prep yourself or did you have someone prep? No. So when I was on my PT course, that's when I met Sophie Brewster. Oh, f- Right. Okay. So I'd never even, I didn't know anything about bodybuilding. I had never been to a bodybuilding show. Yeah. I didn't even know it was like a thing really. And then Sophie was like, yeah, I do WBFF and I've done a competition. Yeah. And because I'm so competitive, I was like, whoo, what is this? Yeah. So then I didn't know other coaches or anything at the time. Mm-hmm. So I just, she helped you. Kind of coached me, yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's not talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was, it, to be honest, it was one of the best things for me as a coach because I was constantly educating myself in regards to what what to do because there was a lot of things that she was saying that was just like, that just doesn't sound right. Mm-hmm. So I was like doing a lot of research and I think that's what's made me as good of a coach as to what I am now because I've been, I got exposed to actually putting myself out there, like, since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, after your first two shows, did you then start helping people online, essentially? Yes. So, I started getting traction on Instagram after... She's the fucking queen of Instagram. (laughs) Jesus Christ, can't get fucking rid of her. (laughs) Fucking everywhere. (laughs) I started getting, like, people reaching out around... Like just after my first show, yep. really, and then it was really after the when I won the overall at the British finals in that year. That's um, when were I you in? St- what, were you competing in at that point? That was my second show. Right. Okay. That was the. And you won the overall. There. Train, yeah. Right. Okay. Sick. Okay. So yeah, look, if you start winning shows, yeah, you're gonna get busy. Yeah. So had you launched as like a business at that point? So I was just like um. Or just kind of like P- I was it? like PT, so I did half. PT and half online. At mm-hmm. that point, I didn't have much online clients. Mm-hmm. And I was like, at that point, that was just working all, all the, the time. time. All the time. But I didn't want to, so I was like gradually taking down PT, but I didn't yeah. want to lose that income just in, in case. case I couldn't get yeah. it back. Mm-hmm. So I actually transitioned fully on t- online because of COVID. So because of COVID yeah. and you got those government grants for being a PT, I was like, well, I'm getting paid still for PT. I'm going to pound social media just now. So I was doing lives. I was putting myself out there, like constantly putting up content and people were coming in. You know what this sounds like? And then I had to pay the government grant back because <laughs> I had my, <laughs> I'd like doubled my income <laughs> in that year. Yeah, it was yeah. like, yeah, you're going to have to pay them back. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds literally how... It happened for me, minus the PT. Yeah. But it was like, right, I'm getting paid by my job. I need to go and fucking make the most of this now. Yeah. Because I was getting busier. And then by the end of lockdown, it was like, right, I don't need to go back to work now. And it's because I fucking pounded yeah. socials all day, every day. And yeah. treated it like a fucking job. Yeah. Which is what you need to do. Like I say it to so many people. People will hop on a consult call with me about their business. And I haven't seen them put a thing on the story for yeah 48 hours. Yeah. That matters. Yeah, like, definitely. And, oh, I don't like posting. Okay, neither do I, really, <laughs> but I still do it because it means I'm fucking relevant all the time. Yeah, definitely. You know, and when I said that Erin's queen of social media, every time I fucking scroll down, I'm going to see something that's <laughs> you. But that keeps me, keeps you in my head. Yeah, and that's definitely. What you have to do. Oh, definitely. 100%. So, right, COVID happened. Didn't need to go back to work, essentially. Yeah. 
Did you like do like a launch of like right? I am solely online now. Is it was just no, just posting all the time. No, I did uh, like a a twelve week challenge kind of idea. So mm-hmm. at the time, I think I maybe had three competitors and I had a lot of lifestyle clients. So I did a really cheap cheap challenge. It was like fifty pounds. Fifty pounds for. 12 weeks. I used to charge £50 a month for coaching when I first started. So I did a £50 online challenge. But the thing that I did was I changed every single one of the people's diet plans every week. So, like, for example, if they had, like, an English muffin with eggs for breakfast, the following week I would change it to to oats and then I would give them (laughs) pancakes. But I was doing that for every single meal. Just shocking the body. For £50 for 12 weeks. And I had, like, more than 100 people doing it. Oh, fuck. So it was was wild. But that's when I realised that I had such a passion for helping people online as opposed to PT because... Mm. You're building, although it's online, you're still building up a relationship with that with that person. And like competitors is like my baby. Like yeah. it's that's what I'm so passionate with is working with people that are like minded and yeah. working with people that want it as as bad as as bad as I do. And it's yeah. just it's just been a natural progression Tran- transition mm. but it's funny because when i started coaching i actually wrote in like a little journal that i wanted to be just coach full competitors Sick. F- like full time Sick. love that and it was the love same that. year that i had wrote that i want to win my baby pro card that was what i was in the next <coughs> transition into so what year did you win your pro card 2019 and where fucking hell, four was years it ago. was it 2019 yeah so i did Shit. bikini trained 2017, took a year off. That's when I started with Carl. Then the following year, I did a one pro card. What show? Italy. Italy. So okay. I did a regional in the UK and then won my pro card the, the show after. Sick. Okay. And did you notice a big uptick then? Yes. In business? Yeah. To be honest, it's just been it's just been gradual. Yeah, yeah. It's just been gradual, I think. Just actually putting myself out there not necessarily edgy from an education perspective like yes I I, like I'm not the same coach as everybody else I think every single coach at the moment is putting the exact same things on social media they're putting the exact same videos on social media and like I'm just not like that Mm -hmm. I think I'll put bits on my story that shows that I actually do know what I'm talking about Mm -hmm. but from like a business perspective, it's it's me. People yep. buy into people. People buy into people. And if you're not putting yourself Price. out there and actually being the person, like you're a prime example of this, and which is why I'm getting you on my podcast because you're yourself. Yeah. You're not hiding behind a mask. You're not hiding behind a filter. You're mm. whoever you want to be. Yeah, exactly. And I think, like, well, probably to, to be fair, I haven't really spoke much about this with anyone else. On the podcast, probably because I haven't needed to, but like, from like, uh, that is a confidence thing. Yeah. A hundred percent. And like, I know that like deep down, I'm not the most confident person, but I'm very confident in myself yeah. and my ability now that I know that if I just put me out there, it, yeah. it sells. That's Fake it. it till you make it, baby. Fucking right, yeah. Fake and it till you make it. Literally, I feel like, because you were just like, oh, I just got busier over time. You just put out, like you said, you're not like any other coach and all sorts of because you just put out whatever the fuck you want to put yeah. out. Yeah. You put out stuff you like. And funny enough, other people will probably like that. Yeah. And they go, you know what? Actually, my coach is a right twat. I really like Erin. I'm going to go to her. Yeah. And word of mouth's a big thing as well. Yeah. If you're treating a client the way that you should, giving them support, like being on it from their front, they'll tell their friends. Yeah. And then 100%. they'll come on, and then yeah. they'll tell other people, and it's just like a yeah, a like, snowball effect. Yeah, well, I always get people say, "Oh, you coach my mate." Yeah, and they've sent, and I say, "Oh, I'll send you my inquiry response video." Already seen it. I'm like, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> well, here's my bank details. Just send that. We'll start. Sweet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've already got them, mate, as well. Um, so cool. So pro card got oh, man. That's like fucking four years ago. So you'll be known a bit more now as well. I see you as a bit more. <clears throat> you are a businesswoman now. In my opinion. And now I don't like talking about coaches. Oh, it's a business flat. Because at the end of the day, we just get people in fucking shape. 
it's not that serious, but you have built something that people recognise. Okay, and that something is Femiva. I'm saying that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Where did that come from? Where did that start? How did it start? Why? Like everything. Tell me everything about it. So I originally started as Erin Thompson Fitness. Then I trans- <laughs> <laughs> Then I tran- And you want to know the worst thing? The logo. It said Erin Thompson Fitness with like, you know, like a heartbeat. <laughs> that was my logo. Nice. So I was like, right. No, I'm changing that. So rebranded to Coach by Erin. I was coached by Erin for a couple of years. And I was getting to that point that I was full with clients and the majority of my clients were Competing. competitors. And I was like, right, I don't want to not, like, like I don't want to not take on lifestyle people, but I need somebody I'm gonna else. I'm going to interrupt. What do you class as full at that time? I had like 120. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was too much. That was way too much. Yeah. Strip that strip that back down mm-hmm. now. Yeah. I think when it's predominantly competitors, it's a lot. Yeah. Whereas I'd still say 50% of mine is still lifestyle. Yeah. So I can handle that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But when it's if it's majority competitors, fuck me, that's a lot. Yeah. It was yeah. way too much, but it, it was a lesson at the time. Mm-hmm. I know what I can handle yeah. and what my capacity yeah. capacity is and to be honest if you don't push the boundaries you're you never go out. you're never going to going to know and, and also know that your burnout point or your maximum limit is ever changing as well yeah because i know when i've got to certain points before I thought, fuck no it needs to stop and after a couple of months nah, actually you know what i could probably put, bump that a little bit yeah it's just practice over time isn't yeah. it yeah and, and it's fucking just being routined yeah oh definitely yeah. But even with client like competitors as well, they're checking in multiple times per week. Yeah. They're checking in multiple times throughout the day. Yeah. I can't do that with a hundred people, no. especially when it's it's show season. Yeah. So it's capped significantly lower than that now. But yeah, I needed a lifestyle coach. So that's when Martina came mm-hmm. into the into the picture. Yeah, Martina was amazing. To begin with, because mm-hmm. at the time she was a compet. I'm, I'm just going to be very honest on this podcast. I'm just going. I'm just going to tell you guys. I'm going to tell you guys everything <laughs> because I've never actually really spoke about it properly. So there was no drama between me and Martina. It was simply the fact that she did. She so when she started, she was a competitor. She was doing the do. She was basically like me. Mm-hmm. After like four or five months, she was starting to not go to the gym. She was she wasn't like prioritizing her nutrition, mm-hmm. and then she basically changed from being more like a holistic coach. So mm-hmm. you don't need to track your calories. You can lose weight without tracking your calories. So, it wasn't it's going okay, in line with what you. It's preach. okay to not go to the gym mm-hmm. and. So we was both on both on Opposites. the Instagram page, and then I would be putting up a post, being like, "You've got to to work hard. Like you've got to be disciplined. <laughs> you've got to like eat, sleep, train, repeat." Yeah. And then she would go on and be like, "Take a day off. Yeah, it's yeah. fine." So for the consumer, they was going on to the Instagram page and being like, "Well, what is this company? Mm-hmm. Like, what is?" What is coached by Erin? Because one person saying one thing and one person saying the other, mm-hmm. and that's when I decided to rebrand to Femevo, and I told Martina to basically go and do her her own thing because yeah. it just didn't align, and no matter how hard I tried, it just it just wasn't wasn't working. Yeah. So I just rebranded to Femevo, which is female evolution. So we've got... I didn't even click. <laughs> yeah, female evolution. <laughs> Fucking dumb as shit. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got femme, femme prep and we've got femme physique. So femme physique is for those that are lifestyle competitive, like lifestyle people, but love they don't training. compete. They yeah. just love training. Mm-hmm. And we've got the tagline take up space, which I freaking love. Yeah. I just love it so much. So, yeah. Okay, sick. Fucking hell. So that takes us to now. Yeah. Really. Um, Where, to be fair, like, when I think about, like, female coaches, obviously I had Soph on last podcast, I've got you on. 
I'd say you know, like the leaders of the female coaching industry. Right. Why do you think there's like a lack of that in the industry? Because the, a lot of females are scared. It is a male dominant industry. Mm. Like a lot of the best coaches in the UK are males. Mm -hmm. And I think females are scared to put themselves out there. Mm -hmm. Scared to be different. And again, like everybody is like sheep. Everybody does the exact same things. Yeah. Everybody's got the same, same, same strategy. And I'm... I don't know. I just, I'm just myself. Yeah. I'm just myself. And I think clients resonate with that. And I just love my job. I absolutely love my job. Yeah. And you can tell because, like you said at the start, I was working non stop. Has that, has that even changed? It's not changed. It's no. not changed. It's literally. But would you change that? No. I wouldn't yeah. change it. Like, I wouldn't do you change get, it. Because I get a lot of people say, oh, bro, man, you should, you know, should take some time for yourself. You know, should take it off and look. And I 100% get where they're coming from. I don't, I don't want to. Yeah. When I do want to, I do it. I, but that's rare. I took, I've took Christmas Day off. I took New Year's Day off. There's not a lot of time that I take off from work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, yeah, like even on my show day, the last time I competed, I had clients competing the, the yeah. same day as well. Yeah, yeah. standard. <laughs> I know. I remember so. when I was prepping so. I was sick. I, her first show, I was six days out from my first ever show, and I was prepping her. <laughs> I was like a fucking corpse. I mean, it was awful. I, I look back and think, I don't even know how I did that. Yeah. I had no brain function. It worked though, so fuck it. Yeah, eat that. Um, so, I'm going to go down a little bit of a different route now. Okay. <laughs> you look scared. So, look, coaching's not forever. Yeah. And. I'm very much of the kind of thing I need, not a backup plan, but I need things in the loop that kind of can keep things ticking over, that when this isn't a thing, because I don't want to be coaching people when I'm 50. Like, I do think coaching has a shelf life, mainly because I don't think you can be this busy for years and years and because you will just, I mean, I think I will have a catastrophic burnout at some point. Yeah. So I know from you, like, you have a lot of, like, Fingers in different pies. Yeah. And stuff like that. Like, what are you doing tomorrow? You want to talk about that? You yeah. About that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing tomorrow? So tomorrow I am going to be in like a like a movie. So I did it. <laughs> 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 Nothing weird. <laughs> I did it I did it a couple of months ago. And it's just basically acting, so I've got like a I got like a like a script. So the last time I did it, it was like some guy was like trying to like rob things from my house. Yeah. So it was just like acting scenes of like me like being like, get out. And yeah. then like I had to like pretend I was like punching them and throwing them <laughs> throwing them for the for the film. So it's basically it's continuing, continuing that on. So I've got two days of filming uh tomorrow. And yeah, it's just these opportunities. Like yeah. people because of social media, it's Open, open to opportunities uh, that I, I don't know what this film is even for. I like, yeah. I, I don't know nothing about it. Same with when I shot with Vogue. I didn't know it was Vogue until I actually got to the, got yeah. to the shoot. Fuck, so what like, if, when you got there? if yeah, I was like, oh Fuck. my goodness. I remember that. I was well, in here that, in makeup for like five hours. It was when you're out in America, wasn't it? No, it was or, in London. Oh. Yeah, it was when I came home from America. There were some other people doing it as well, wasn't there? Yeah, Rhea Gale Rhea, was, do, was it, doing Rhea. it. Nancy was doing it. Oh, so yeah. There's I have seen her in years. Yeah, I know. Nancy, is it Nancy Jones? Yeah. Is, yeah, yeah. I think she's in Dubai now. Shock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is everyone. So, yeah, I just jump on uh, any opportunity. Jump on any opportunity. So I'm just doing this one. Mm -hmm. And it's paid for, so... And it's fun. I love travelling. I love going to different places. I love... Like seeing what different industries are are like as well. So yeah, yeah do and that. I think if you could look back now to when it was 2015 and you were locking yourself away when you were PTing, but then someone says, "Oh, you're going to be acting in eight years' time." I know. Doing Vogue shoots, shit like that. I know. It's it's and like that confidence up over time. Do you just think it's just just 
what's been built up because you've just got busier as a person. And I think when you get busy and you fit, you essentially, you're getting busy because you are wanted. Yeah. That's quite evident. You know when that's happening. I feel like that does build a certain level of like confidence and stuff yeah. behind it. And you are very now body confident. Yeah. And you are incredibly unique. Yeah. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is Erin utilising yeah. that uniqueness. And I have spoke to Erin before, before just bringing this on her. And to be fair, not, not a lot of people know about this. Nobody knows. Nobody um, really knows about this. I am making myself very, very vulnerable right now because it's not something that I've spoken about, but I've, I've felt like, especially to the people that follow me, I have felt like I've been hiding something for a, like a good couple of months because I was scared about the opinions that people were going to say. I was scared about judgment. Um, Repercussions, potential. Yeah, no. but it's because of the... I'm a businesswoman, and the thing with, with, thing with females, especially in comparison to males... Our time in this industry is a lot shorter. Yes. Because, for example, I I don't know if I want to have kids. I don't know what my future entails because I don't. I'm a very driven person and I want to make the most out of where I am. Right now. Right now. So that's why I take these opportunities. But I also know that coaching is temporary. And although money isn't everything, you need money for financial freedom. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to do the things that I want to do and not worry. Yes. And with coaching, like coaching is my priority. However, with the way that society is nowadays, with the way that social media is, everybody's doing photo shoots. Everybody is posting pictures in their bikinis on Instagram. Yeah. So all I'm doing is the exact same thing, except I'm getting paid for it. Yeah. It is the bra... It, because it's only fans. Like, oh, you're meant to let oh, me say it. You say it then. <laughs> Liam, zoom in, because it's what you're going to put on the, on, the, <laughs> on the trailer. We're going to talk about only fans. Back to you. So, yeah, look, we're, we're so, going to bring it up anyway. So, so because it's called only fans and there's girls on there... You know the drill, guys. Like there is girls, <laughs> literally the drill. Th there is girls on there that are obviously doing a lot. Like there, is, it is a platform where you can sell whatever you want. OnlyFans isn't just for models. There, there's chefs on there. There's DJs on there. There's people selling shit on there. But so it is all Erin does on there is just some it's live just cooking. The, it's just the the name. <laughs> so again, like. I'm very confident in my body. I'm really, really confident with what I look like. And because of the way that I look like and because of the presence that I've got on social media, in like my Instagram page, I, look, I think it's like 70% like female and the rest is male. Mm -hmm. I've got more than 80,000 followers. That is a lot of males on my Instagram page. Mm -hmm. And... A lot of the thing with female bodybuilders as well is it is a fetish. 100%. People like girls with muscle, and I want to. I'm just taking advantage of that. Yeah. All the photos that I have for photo shoots, all the photos that people are posting on Instagram for free, I'm making money for it, and all of that money is getting saved, and it's for my future self, mm. and. It's crazy the amount of money that you can make from absolutely nothing. So it's knowing that I'm not like that. I'll never be like that. When I first started it, I knew what my boundaries were. Like having my boundaries in place because you get all sorts of DMs on there. And you get all sorts of requests, I'm telling you. Yeah, people sorry are, about sending them. People <laughs> are willing to people are willing to pay money yes. to see more. However, because I know my boundaries, I never cross that line mm -hmm. because it's one of those platforms that there's always going to be people coming in. There's always going to be people that are just there to... Like, a lot of the, the people in my OnlyFans are there to support me. Mm -hmm. It's just guys that just love 
girls with muscle mm -hmm. and I don't cross that boundary and I know, my mum knows, my dad knows, the people round about me know that I'm not doing that and that's all that matters. If people want to make a judgement about it, if people want to say whatever they want, well, that's fine. That's, that's your them. opinion. That's that is them. your Fuck opinion them. but if I'm being honest, I'm, I'm not doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I do, I do that. Do you feel like a massive weight lifted? You know what, I do. Good. Because I was scared massively about what my clients would would say. Because coaching is my baby. Coaching is my priority. Coaching is my life. And I would never, ever do something that would take away from that. Mm -hmm. But it's understanding that I am a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. And I am wanting to be... A successful, a successful person, yes. and I want to make money off of every everyone on my Instagram, yeah. not just female bodybuilders. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like you, you hit the nail on the head. It makes you think of like the modelling industry. Yeah, you're you're only this month's news for a certain amount of time. Yeah, do you know what I mean? As pe and it's the same with men. Well, sometimes it's the same with men. I mean, George Clooney still beautiful. Yeah, but as time goes on. And people get older, and they don't look the same. Yeah. Who's signing up then? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you want to make the most of it now, fucking do that. And yeah. you are. And I fuck, that's like literally like, me, me and you have got quite close over the years and stuff yeah. like that. We chat a lot. We chat about fucking everything. And like, I feel proud because like, <laughs> you, should, you should just do whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah. And if someone's got a problem with it, that's their problem. Yeah. It's nothing to do with you. And if any, like, female has a problem with it, do you know what it is? They're fucking jealous because they can't do it or they haven't got the fucking bollocks to do it or whatever. If I was a female and I had muscle and I was very fucking attractive, I'd be on there. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, there isn't a niche for bald, bearded man with not that much muscle. That's a lie. <laughs> there, there's a niche for everything. No, there is a niche for everything. There's a niche for everything. Like, I, I, like, we're going to talk about it probably on your podcast, but I'm very... Now, a days, I'm very comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. Very comfortable taking my clothes off, whatever. I'd fucking happily do it. I yeah. makes, Literally, I wouldn't give a shit. But I also have that imposter syndrome feel of, <laughs> I'm going to start this and no one signs up. Yeah. But, but I'm, I am a classy person. I am not, it's, it's not like... Porn. It's not porn. And oh, if you damn. if you if you want the thing is as well, like <laughs> I've I've had a couple of angry guys message me being like, Your your page is just like an Instagram page and I'm like, Well, it's fine, leave. Yeah. You've already gave me your ten dollars and you've bought the first photo. Yeah. Leave. Yeah, yeah. I'm twenty twenty dollars up already. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. So I do. I yeah. I feel. I feel better. Well, I'm now. glad you got that off your chest. Fucking hell. Oh, and I feel like it's, I love that it's an exclusive on my podcast. <laughs> on your it. podcast. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna get into some. Just some. We're gonna go back to bodybuilding a little bit now. Yes. Oh, calm down a bit. I got a bit hot after that. Um. <laughs> thinking about the OnlyFans page. Um, <laughs> right. So what's the username? <laughs> so, um. I got a question here from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on that for fuck's sake. <laughs> Later. No. Um, so <laughs> I've got a question from one of my clients, actually. And I quite like this question, so I thought I'd ask it. Has becoming an IFBB pro lived up to your expectations and has it changed your life at all? Ooh. Lived up to ex expectations. Now, when it comes to being. I feel like for for me, for example, if anybody doesn't know me, I am quite petite. I'm quite small, and the way that the figure category is now, I've got about twenty kilos that I've got to put on my frame to probably make top ten. <laughs> I would say so. It's it's definitely lived up to the expectations that I am still pushing to be my best. Like I think, like I want to be up there i want to be up there with those girls mm -hmm. and it's being like you're just like a little fish in a big pond again mm -hmm. and yeah it's it's definitely lived up to the expectations in terms of business in terms of 
opportunity in mm-hmm. terms of exposure being respected as you would say especially as a female in the bodybuilding industry like you're respected for that achievement yeah yeah so yeah Sick. i would say so yeah love that okay cool um next one from insta is again one of my clients um what's erin's next steps in both her competitive and personal goals so competitive we know that obviously you compete in eight weeks time yeah. And when's the one after that? Competing in eight eight weeks and 11 weeks out. Mm-hmm. I've got no expectations for the shows because I really don't know. I competed in America the last time I did a pro debut. Came top 12 there. Sick. But I don't know. I, I really, really don't know what my expectations are. So when it comes to bodybuilding, I really don't know because I'm femininity is something that's so important to me. And I'm not willing to excessively push drugs in a short period of time to get myself up there with those top girls. Mm -hmm. So it's a case of seeing how the class changes in the next couple of years. Are the girls going to keep getting bigger or is it going to stay the the same? Mm -hmm. So that'll be the indication in terms of um, bodybuilding, but just to keep growing my business like my I'm putting all of my time into Femme Evo making sure that they are consistently getting a, a better service like I'm always thinking three steps ahead so I've got things in the pipeline that are yet to to come out so like just moving forward from yeah. a business perspective I'm pretty selfish in myself when it comes to like business is really all, all that I do yeah. like this is my time where I need to be focused on on business because if I do this now it's going to pay off yeah. later so yeah just keep focusing on being better being better standard <laughs> right yeah so I always run through like the last questions like the same for every guest and to be fair I normally get the same answers but it's always nice to get a different opinion. So, um, if there's one thing you could change about the industry, what would it be? One thing I could change? Um, The silence is deafening. I know, I'm like... It's hard. I know. One thing I could change, probably coaches not giving a shit about their clients, prescribing absolutely crazy protocols to clients, and then we've got to sort everything out. So I think having a platform where people could maybe, like, basically like a a TripAdvisor kind of thing. Like pro athletes. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Come on. I hope I'm on there. Fucking hell. I I better be on there. You have to create your own profile. Oh, do I? Yeah. Um... Maybe like something, something like that would be, would be really, really beneficial. I think, mm-hmm. or like places where people can go and maybe see what other athletes are doing. Yeah. Okay. Kind of idea. Cool. What's other people said? <sighs> business mentors and. Oh yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> oh, business mentors don't. I could talk about business mentors all day. Yeah. Same. Yeah. No. Just be original. Everybody needs to just yeah. go back and just be original. You don't need a business mentor to get clients. You need to be yourself. Unfortunately, <laughs> not, everyone, not everyone can fucking do that. Yeah. Because themselves is fucking boring. <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? Arr- well, it's true though, isn't it? <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? <laughs> like, not everyone can do this. Like They can't. Yeah. They You've can't. got to be a people person. You've got to care, support. And love all your clients, yep. and we both do. Yeah. So high five to us. Love that. Oh, <laughs> that was awful. That's all right. Um, if you could go back to the start, is there anything you do differently? No, because every, it's all every time. It's it, said that. it's all been a learning experience. <laughs> Started from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, it's true though, isn't it? Everything yeah. that you've done has led up to this point and yeah. you are successful in what you do. Yeah. Simple. People know who you are, what you do, 
And that's all you need. All they need them to fucking know. Yeah. Sick. So you know all this like business stuff. This isn't a question I ask everyone, but you're quite driven. Well, not quite driven. You're very driven. Very competitive. Yeah. You don't like doing things you don't want to do. Yeah. Very selfish. Self-proclaimed. Yeah. Selfish. That's not me saying you're selfish. Um, where does that come from? Probably, definitely in my childhood, the way, like, my mum used to have a business. My dad's... What was mum's business? If you she don't owned a, a children's soft play. Sick. So, I mean, my dad's got a, a few engineering businesses. So, okay. her having him, like, with my mum was quite strict with me when I was younger. Like, I used to be so regimented because I swam for Scotland, I did Highland dancing, so, like... I was in the pool in the morning, going to dancing after school. So like I was so regimented, and my mum was like constantly like pushing me to be the best that I could. Mm -hmm. So with my dad as well, like he's constantly being like, just do it, just yeah. just push. So I think having them as parents and being really really strict mm. for my upbringing has got me to where where I am today. Are they really supportive of what you do now. They aren't like, but there wasn't to begin with with bodybuilding. Yeah. But they're very supportive now. Well, they so, they also see what it brings you. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? You're a businesswoman. Yeah. And you've done that through bodybuilding. Yeah. Which is sick. Um, how do you manage your workload? Well, at the moment I'm getting up at four, because I'm in prep, so I've mm -hmm. got to get my cardio and some of my sets and posing done before. So, get up, do my check-ins first thing. Mm -hmm. And I won't do anything else until my check-ins are done. Yeah, same. Do all my check-ins in the morning. That's why I, right at the moment I'm training like five, six o'clock at night, mm. which isn't <sighs> ideal having my post-workout as my final meal before going to bed, but it just has to be done. Yeah. It has to be done, especially with now managing Dana and Danny as well. So mm -hmm. having meetings, making sure that they've got all the content and stuff that they need for the for the week having to take content for OnlyFans. So basically I'll just block out an afternoon, which is on my least busiest check-in day, mm -hmm. and just take a load of bikini pics. <laughs> Love it. And yeah, cool. and that's really, that's really it. Just structure, <laughs> planning yeah. my biggest tasks first. I'm getting okay. it done. Cool. So I think I know the answer to this because we've already pretty much spoke about it, but... What's the best piece of advice for a new online coach? Be yourself. There we go. Be yourself. Don't and forget. Someone will like it. Don't forget that you are a person and you're not a robot. Like, yes, put out educational content, but do you need to do that on every single post? No. Show your life. Document who you are. Document your own journey. If you're practicing what you preach, you're going to get clients. Speak on your stories. Put up high quality yeah. content. Like That's make sure lovely. that you you know what you're talking. If you're an online coach, make sure that you're f you know what you're talking about and you are educated before you actually start your business in the first place. Yeah. So spend time learning before you actually R take people on. Don't run before you can walk. Yes. Correct. Right. Last question. Oh, last it's hour. a deep one. You have said last question for the past no, four. <laughs> What's she on about? Um, it's always a deep one. Okay. But it can be. Or it might not be. We'll see. So, you're obviously successful. Female in the industry. Very good at what you do. Okay. What is the cost that's to, for you to be at that position? Everything. Everything. Like, I... I'm a robot, basically. Mm -hmm. It's get up, work. I am someone, though, that really struggles with actually taking time away. Mm -hmm. I don't like taking time away. I feel quite anxious if I do yeah, so. take time away. But I, I, I actually have to write in my diary when I'm going to see my mum. So my mum will like have like, will have like meetings blocked in for her coming and having a coffee and everything with, mm -hmm. with me. And it's, and you know when you're doing that? It's hard. Are you thinking about work? Yeah. Yeah. 
but it, like I'm getting a little bit better. It's just difficult. It's it so is, consuming. It is. It is really, really, really hard, and it is a shame because. No other industry is like this. No. Like, no other job. You've got to work seven days a week, 16-hour mm-hmm. days. And I think it is mentally... It is mentally draining sometimes. And sometimes, like, you just need to give yourself, like, an hour. But even then, like, me taking time in the morning to practice gratitude actually really helps with my head. And I'm like, you know what? This is actually worth it. Yep. It'll pay off in the long run. But it's hard. <sighs> it's got me a little bit emotional. That's a little bit emotional, that one. Because like when you said everything. Yeah. Like the cost is everything. And I, I, like, I can true. so relate. It's like, if I'm talking to someone, I say, do you want to meet up on certain day? No, I can't do that time. Yeah. That's when I'm working. But at the same time, I sometimes think, well, that's like, if you ask him to meet on a fucking Tuesday at 10 a.m. I know. Well, surely isn't everyone working at that point? Yeah, like, exactly. That's what I say to yeah, my mum like, when she tries and phones me. I'm like, look, the, if if I was working in Tesco, you wouldn't be phoning me right now. So mm-hmm. phone me at half past four. <laughs> <laughs> Savage. So now she'll phone me at like half past four. <laughs> like every other mm. every other day. And it, it, is, it is really, really difficult. I'm going on, we're, well, we're going on a two-week cruise after my competition and I am nervous for it very 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 nervous for it which is normally a normal quote unquote person would be like I'm so excited to go away I don't get excited about going away I get anxious about going away because it's out of my routine I haven't got my jewel screen just just random shit like that I hate not having it yeah I'm the same so I'm I'm actually going to be telling my clients in the next week that in July I'm going to be going away for a two-week cruise where everybody is going to have one check-in per week, mm-hmm. apart from, obviously, clients that's, like, right close to show. Yeah, yeah. And it'll be voice notes, which I'm very nervous about as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, look, I but used, I I'm used still to... Going to... I'm still going to work, but I'm just going to try and take time away. But even then, I feel guilty for taking time away because when I go on Instagram and I see Susan and Susan's, like, putting an Instagram photo up on her story of her laptop and I'm like, shit, yeah. I'm out here having a coffee with my parents. Mm. I should be at my desk. Yeah, and, like, I think Bright Brightman did a couple of stories on this recently. I'm actually going to try and get him on the podcast. Yeah. Um, because he's been away quite a bit in like the last month. Yeah. Like one for like his mates, uh, Stag do, which is in India. Uh, he went skiing or snowboarding, whatever. And it's like, it makes him feel so guilty. And at the same time, you know, when like someone has got a normal job and they've got a holiday yeah. and you get holiday pay yeah. and you go away and you don't have to look at your fucking laptop or your fucking phone. We don't have that luxury and people don't even fucking recognize it. Yeah. They don't realize it. But any time that I've had some time off, like, when me and Soph went to Sweden, New Year's Eve, a couple of years back now, I said, I'm taking five days off. And you know how many people had a problem with it? No one. Yeah. Because it's a holiday. And because I've built up that rapport and respect with my clients, everyone said, bro, go and have an amazing time. Yeah. Don't look at your fucking phone. Because they support you. Yeah, I completely agree. But it doesn't take away from the fact that, fuck, I don't like sending that message. Yeah, because I know. one time there might be a person that says, I ain't happy with that, bro. I should be refunded. I don't fucking know. They might not be happy with it or whatever. And that like, hurts because I care like so yeah, much about I'm, people I'm and stuff like that. I'm like, I care about you, bro, for fucking 51 weeks of the year. Give me this week off, bro. Yeah. I'm the, I'm the exact, even when I was on my honeymoon, I had people messaging me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I said that I was going away, but everybody still yeah. messages. And when I would like, I would turn my phone on airplane mode and I would come back and I've got like, 25 on red chats and whatsapp and it's it is it is hard. hard it is really really difficult but mm. it's it's just part of the part of the job because yeah. at the end of the day we're looking after people and people need support we're mm-hmm. not just here to provide nutrition and training we're basically there to help them yeah with their life as, with their life as yeah. well so it's just one of those things mm. it's it's just part of the job and mm-hmm. we've just got to <sighs> Jesus Christ. Do you what we can? I'm just going to go for a cry after this. Um, <laughs> before we get into the next podcast. I know. <laughs> so, we're going to wrap it up. Okay. First thing, I thought that was fucking sick. I really enjoyed that. Liam's nodding his head. He thought it was good as well. <laughs> Liam always gives the seal of approval after the podcast. He's like, yeah, that was a good one, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but that was sick. Uh, where to find Erin? It's erint.ifbbpro. 
You got it. I type it in that many times. Yeah, he spelt my last name wrong, and it's Thompson without a P. I changed it on the thing, so whatever. Yeah, um, yeah it's without a P, Aaron Thompson. Um, I won't get you to plug anything else. No. <laughs> um, take Up Space Podcast. Yeah, Take Up Space Podcast, Aaron T. IFBB Pro on Insta, Fem Evo, all this sort of stuff. So thanks for coming on, and thanks for coming away from Scotland. I mean, she was coming here anyway, so whatever. <laughs> um, she's back, She's come for something else. Um, <laughs> I was just an afterthought. So um, go and give her a follow. Go like, share, comment, subscribe on this shit. And I'll see you at the next one. Peace.